Silks are very important for Inuit culture in terms of providing uh, food on the table for the family and for the community and also it's very important to be used for clothing and also uh, second secondary industry is the uh, art and crafts. As I continue to expand my research into the white Canadian commercial seal slaughter, I repeatedly find myself listening to the Aboriginals of Canada telling us how important their seal slaughter is. Wow. I'm building this video series to further expose the shameful behavior of the Canadian government. They're willingly misinforming foreign governments and animal rights supporters that when we succeed in ending the slaughter, we will also be bringing a close to a way of life for the Inuit and other Aboriginals of Canada. In 2006, the European Union announced it would be considering a complete or partial ban on seal products from around the world. Aware of the dependency the Aboriginals of Canada have on both seal hunting and trade, an Aboriginal exclusion clause is included. Inuit and other Aboriginals would be allowed to continue selling their seal products in Europe if ban legislation were passed. Before we continue, I think it's pretty important to see some Aboriginal seal hunt statistics. The Aboriginal hunt and white commercial hunt are completely separate from one another. Inuit hunt primarily ring seals, not harp seals. Not one Inuit holds a seal hunting license issued by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. The DFO also does not regulate any Aboriginal seal hunts. They are all regulated by Aboriginal governmental bureaus. Consistent with their record in 2007, the Aboriginal take of the 234,000 harp seal kill is only 3%. The Inuit do not target baby seals. The Inuit hunt is one of subsistence, that being that they eat or use every part of the seal. After the Inuit have consumed everything they have need for, they create and sell arts and crafts with the remaining materials. Seals are not killed to exploit a craft's market like the white commercial seal slaughter. The Inuit still hunt seals and use them traditionally for nutritious food and for warmth and clothing. If the Aboriginal seal hunt has nothing to do with the white commercial DFO regulated seal hunt, why are some Aboriginals being seen supporting it? As a hunter myself, seeing it firsthand, we're always going on seal hunting so that we can have food for our family, so we can survive out on the land. And um, this is what's happening right now, so that it won't affect us. If it happens, seal bad happens, it's going to affect us really hard. Because it helps us to go out hunting, it helps us to eat, it helps us to survive out, out on the land. It's very important to give out a message to people all around Canada and all around Europe so that we can help our families. That's how I see it myself. Every February, off the east coast of Canada, some 200,000 harp seal pups are born. For three weeks, they live on the ice floes, unable to swim capable only of crying to their mothers for food. Although the continuation of their seal hunt is not threatened, the Aboriginals do have another legitimate concern. With the passage of the U.S. Marine Mammals Protection Act in 1972 and the subsequent Aboriginal excluded EU ban of the 1980s, the end of the white coat baby seal slaughter had finally been delivered.
Nonetheless, the Inuit and other Aboriginal communities suffered a backlash from the stigmatization of seal products. Even they were unable to sell their goods at a reasonable price. Their market was in shambles. Nevertheless, that doesn't justify their support of the white Canadian commercial seal hunt. I'm a professional sealer from Newfoundland. We've been on this earth a long time, and there's a place for me. My name is Hala Manawa. I work for a GM in Nunavut. I consider myself a full-time hunter. Look familiar? Uh, seals, caribou, the fish, all okay. It's the middle of March, and as you can see, this is my community. This is the Kaluit. And everything is uh, snow. Out in the horizon is normally the water, but the snow is covered here nine months of the year. We have no trees. We have no vegetation. So we live off the land. The land provides us with the seal. This is seal skin. We use it for clothes, for mitts. And we, we really cannot grow anything here. Again, we see in another DFO video an Inuit justifying their seal hunt. Why is the DFO so concerned with the Aboriginal hunt when they have no interest in it? A hunt that isn't even being threatened. In a document obtained through Access to Information, the Canadian equivalent of the Freedom of Information Act, it was found that in 2001, a memo from the Canadian Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade that they recommended that Canada play the Nunavut Inuit card as the leverage to open the door to obtaining a waiver to the U.S. Marine Mammals Protection Act and have the East Coast sealers follow. Greenpeace was met with hostility and resentment from the townspeople of St. Anthony. I'd like to place a resolution before this meeting tonight that these people be given until tomorrow morning to place themselves back on their bus, remove themselves from St. Anthony and the province of Newfoundland. This playing of the Inuit card initiative can all be traced back to a discussion document entitled Defense of the Fur Trade from 1985. In it, the Canadian Department of External Affairs can be quoted as saying, Defense of Aboriginal cultures could be a good counterbalance to anti-fur, anti-trapping campaigns. For the Aboriginal peoples of Canada and Greenland, I've compiled a series of statements I think it's imperative you hear to show the DFO is using you as tools. These people are your enemies, not these. <laughs>